Meg and I are just cleaning up around the house today. Yep, but now that you're here, it's time to save some energy. Coming up on Align Energy's Powerhouse. Megan puts on some overalls and becomes a technician's assistant to discover the dirty side of energy efficiency. Pete and I put on our do-it-yourself hats and find easy ways to help you find and fix air leaks around the house. And LED bulbs are here to stay. We'll take advantage of some cool features that give you the ultimate control. Next on Powerhouse. You know, heating and cooling contractors are really like unsung heroes, because typically we only call them when something goes wrong, when our furnace, water heater, or air conditioner are on the fritz. Well, today I'm going to be a service technician's assistant and get to see firsthand what it is they do. Hi, are you John? Yes. Hi, Megan. Thanks for having me along. Oh, it's my pleasure. Now, what is our mission today? Well, we're being dispatched to a house to do a dryer vent cleaning and uh, clean and check on the air conditioner. Okay. Why is preventative maintenance so important? Well, so you don't have those breakdowns in the hottest days of summer. And then also for the dryer vent, it's mainly so that the dryer will run efficiently and also safely. Great. Let's go. I'm excited. Right. So can I help you carry anything? Sure can. Here, why don't you grab the gauges? All right. and, uh, temperature probe. Got him. And I got the tools. And let's head on to the condenser. So John, is an air conditioner tune-up something that homeowners should have done every year? Yeah, I would definitely recommend it uh, because you can actually get mice that can get inside and chew up wires um, and also to get it washed and clean so that it works efficiently. All right, what's the first step in the process? Well, first step is we want to shut the power off to the unit, make it safe so that we don't have electricity that can shock us. Let's go ahead and take this top off. Okay. Tilt this back. Okay. Wow, this is a mess. So what do you look at first? Well, actually, I'm going to look at the capacitor first. Get my meter out here. What do the capacitors do? Well, the capacitor is like a very large battery that charges up and helps the compressor start and run. If the capacitor is weak or if it's shorted, it can cause the compressor to actually overheat, and it can also use a lot of energy to run the compressor. Well, I'm checking with my meter here, and that checks out perfect. All right. Great. And what's after that? Well, I like to check the contactors. The contactor is just uh, the switch that actually turns the compressors on and off. And if they're pitted or uh, burnt up, they can also cause excessive energy usage. Now, the next thing we want to check is the wiring. And I want to check to make sure that uh, mice haven't or rodents haven't gotten into and chewed up the wires. It looks like everything's intact to me. How about yes. you? Yeah, it looks good. It looks very good. Now, I know on the show we talk oftentimes about um, the exterior of the unit and what homeowners can do to keep the shrubbery away, keep the debris away, maybe mm -hmm. even hose off the outside. But obviously, when you're dealing with all of those components, this is why we call a professional, right? Yes, definitely so. I, I would greatly recommend it because the trained eye can see things that the homeowner can't and can prevent you know, the unit from shutting down in the, in the summertime when you need it the most. And so. what's next? Well, now we wash out the condenser coil. Air conditioning is much like a sponge. Inside, it absorbs the heat, and then outside, it extracts the heat. And to do that, it has to extract it through the coil. If this coil is dirty, it cannot get rid of the heat. So therefore, it has to be washed out. What we're going to do is we're going to take the water and we're going to back flush the coil. We're going to spray from the inside out because the dirt is collected on the outside here. Then we're going to head inside and we're going to check the furnace blower and the air conditioner operation while this is drying out. All right, let's do it. Okay, 
Okay, John, so now that we're done outside, explain to us how the furnace is a vital component of this system. Well, the furnace is part of the air conditioning system because it uses the blower to blow through the evaporator coil that sits on top of the furnace. That evaporator coil is like a big sponge that it actually absorbs the heat as the air is blown through it and then the heat is taken outside where it's expelled. Now part of the component on this furnace is the blower. Now the blower itself you want to check and make sure that it is clean and a lot of it is done without sight and you want to feel the fins on the blower itself, the blower wheel, and then while you're back here you want to check the shaft of the blower motor itself. You want to make sure that it is not loose, um, rattling, uh, anything like that. Now Megan, I'm going to let you take over from here and let you change the filter. Okay. Filter is also a vital part of the air conditioning system because if it gets plugged up it can cause problems such as icing up, lack of airflow. Now, if you want to pull that out and check it, this filter should be inspected once a month and ch changed accordingly. Right, that's what we usually tell people. It may not need to be changed every month, but at least check it. Right. To and me, this looks like a pretty dirty filter. It is, it is. And here's the new one here. Now, one thing you want to make sure with the filter here is that the airflow arrow goes towards the furnace. Right. So, air will blow into here. And then also another little thing that I always like to do is dating it here. So before you slide it in there, why don't you date that? And that kind of gives you an idea of when the filter was changed last. And you can change them accordingly. All right, now we got that taken care of. Now another part of the air conditioning system is the drain. That's this right here. You want to make sure that that's clean and allows water to flow because if not it can cause an overflow and a flood. Okay. There's your wrench there. Go ahead and take the clean out out. How do you clean it out? Well I have a special little brush here and just take that brush and slide that in and clean out all the gunk out of there. Okay. okay. There you that's go. It? Yep, that's it. Go ahead and pull it out. And you're all set and ready to go. Go ahead and put the plug back on. Tighten it down. Now on this system right here, we have a condensate pump. This is uh, a pump with a reservoir that water goes into and is then pumped overhead to a drain. So you don't have that hose dragging across the floor. People can trip up. These are a nice little option to put on um, on your furnace. So what's next? Well, we have to go outside and now we're ready to start things up and check the charge. Now we've got our gauges hooked up here and we're seeing that the pressures are right where we need to be. Our temperature is right where it needs to be. Looks like this unit is ready for those hot days of summer. That was our final step. We can check that off the list. All right. What are we going to tackle next? Well, we're going to go inside and we're going to start cleaning that dryer vent. Sounds good. But first, many utilities offer rebates to help pay for an air conditioner tune-up. To find out more, go to AlliantEnergy.com slash options. Did you know the modern-day air conditioner was invented in 1902 when Willis Carrier solved a humidity problem in a printing company by pumping cold water through coils? While reducing the humidity, he also created a cooling effect similar to melting over 100,000 pounds of ice per day. This is one big vacuum, John. Yeah, this is a specially designed vacuum cleaner strictly for dryer vents. Need some help? Yeah, thank you. Oh, all right. Okay, so aside from efficiency, which yeah. is a big issue and why we would want to keep a dryer clean, why else? Well, on, on the safety aspect, dryer lint is the number one cause of dryer, dryer fires. So therefore, you have to keep this thing clean. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to hook this vacuum cleaner up to the dryer first. Uh, we're going to clean the lint out of it by use of high pressure air. So if you want to go ahead and connect that up. How far should I put it in? Only about six inches. Then I'm going to grab some compressed air here and we're going to blow through the lint and uh, the dryer vac will pick it up. 
Okay. Then after we're done with that, I want you to clean out the outside mm -hmm. and make sure everything's nice and clean back there. And then hook up to the dryer vent itself. And we're gonna head outside and we're gonna run the brushes down through. Okay. So John, this is the final step, right? Yeah, now we've located the dryer vent. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this cover off. If you wanna hand me the brush. Now looking at this, this is not gonna get us all the way down no, to the laundry room. No, it's not. There are connecting rods that we all put together. And what happens is this brush will spin when we're pulling it out and it cleans the inside of the pipe. And then the vacuum cleaner that's running inside will suck up all the vent. Okay, last one. All right, go ahead and hand me the drill. So this is what's gonna rotate that brush. Exactly get right. all of the lint and junk out of it. All righty, I'll stay here and hold on to it. Let it rip, Megan, and head on out. All right, we're all done. All done, that wasn't as messy as I thought it would be. No, it's not. It also didn't take very long. How no. long does it typically take you to do this job? It normally takes about an hour. Of course, with help, it takes a lot less time. <laughs> and how about to do the other job with the air conditioner and get that It takes ready? about an hour to do the air conditioner. Great. This was really fun. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much for the help. If you'd like more information about how to keep your home safe and energy efficient, go to our website, powerhousetv.com. Energy Star clothes dryers use 20% less energy than conventional models. When shopping for a new clothes dryer, look for one with a moisture sensor that automatically shuts off the machine when your clothes are dry. Not only will this save energy, but it will save the wear and tear in your clothes caused by over drying. A crack as small as 1 16th of an inch around a window frame can let in as much cold air as leaving the window open three inches. Stopping air leakage is one of the easiest thing a homeowner can do to save energy. That's right, Pete. Now most utility companies offer free home energy assessments and they find the leaks for you. But we've got some time today, so we're gonna show you how to find the leaks yourself. And then we're gonna fix them. Megan, why don't you go ahead and go inside and I'll check around out here. When you're looking for leaks on the outside of your home, you want to look for areas that have two different building materials coming together. And here's a perfect example. You got the foundation and the siding of the house. Now you may have to get down low to really take a look and see, are there any gaps or cracks? And here's an example, cracks that we're going to want to seal. One of the things you should do is just mark it with a piece of chalk so that you know, I want to come back here and fix this area a little bit later. You also want to check for any vents, anything that has a hole coming from inside outside, you'll want to look for any discoloration that's going to indicate a possible air leakage. Another good place to check is bundled wires coming outside or inside here, your cable or whatever you might have. Here's a perfect example where we're going to want to seal this up, wires going in and there's definite air leakage here. Megan is probably checking the windows and doors on the inside, but we should do the same outside. You want to look for any discoloration or any gaps, and we've found some right here. So we're going to take care of that, and then I'll join Megan on inside in just a moment. Now, when looking for air leaks, sometimes it's really obvious. If you see daylight coming in, in cracks around your doors and windows like this, then obviously you have an air leak. Sometimes it's not as easy to detect though, so I've got a little trick to show you how to find those spots. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to close all the doors and windows in your house and then turn on all of your exhaust fans and that's gonna pull that air outside. It also helps if it's a windy day. So once your exhaust fans have been running for a couple of minutes, take an incense stick like this and light it. Now we're going to use this smoke as a tool to tell us where the drafts are coming in. And if you don't have any incense, that's okay. You can just use your hand to feel for drafts, but since we have it and it's a great visual, I'm going to show you how to do it. 
All right, now the first thing you're going, going to want to do is check around your doors and windows like this, right? We're looking for any kind of smoke movement at all, whether it gets sucked back out or pushed back into the room. And I really don't see anything going on. Well, now wait a minute. Down here at the bottom, I see some movement. So we're gonna have to address this, likely put in a draft guard, something like that, since we obviously can't caulk the door. Now I'm gonna fly through the rest of the house and check all of the doors, windows, paying attention to, to exterior wall, light covers, switch covers like this. I don't see anything going on. Let's see what's happening in the rest of the house. Hey. Did you find anything? I did, I found a couple spots. And now that we've found those spots, we need to seal them up because that's gonna help us for the future. That's right. How about I'll race you to see who gets done first. Okay, how about loser buys dinner? Deal. Great. Fixing the leaks is pretty straightforward. We're just filling in the gaps. Now I'm using a sealant that is four outdoors. So we're just gonna go ahead and start fixing. Now we've shown you door sweeps in the past that you can attach with screws or even with adhesive. This one is immediate gratification because it simply slides on the bottom of the door. Well, I'm done, so it looks like I get a free dinner. If you have an area like this where the wires are coming out and it's a little bit of a wider gap, you'll want to use expandable foam, just a little bit in and it'll expand to fill it. Hi, Pete. Oh, looks like I'm buying dinner. Yes, you are. Now today we did all of this work ourselves, but don't forget that most utility companies offer a service to help you find your leaks. Come on, let's go have dinner. I'm starving. Every year, more than $13 billion worth of energy leaks from houses through small holes and cracks. That's more than $150 per family. You know, Megan is always telling me, my style needs to be updated. Well, I've got a surprise for her and all I need are some special LED bulbs that are smarter than you might think. These will kick my style into high gear. Oh yeah. You know, LED bulbs save a lot of energy, more than CFLs and a lot more than regular incandescent bulbs. Up to 5% of your energy bill can come from lighting. Old incandescent bulbs gave off about 90% of the energy they used as heat. LEDs are much more efficient. Plus, you can even touch them without getting burned. The cost of running an old incandescent bulb for a year is about $8. And the average household has about 45 bulbs. If only half of them are used throughout the year, that would be about $180. Compare that to an LED that uses only about 95 cents to run for a year, and you get a little over $21. That's a savings of around 90%. These bulbs that I'm installing are different. They're smart bulbs. I'll be able to control them with my phone. And once I'm done, I'll be able to do more than just save energy. Okay. You need to have Wi-Fi in your home to be able to use these type of bulbs, but the flexibility of what they can do is pretty nifty. Okay, I've finished installing my bulbs around the house. Now I've downloaded the app on my phone that allow me to control the lights either individually or as a group. The great thing, I can control the brightness here. Pull them up, I've got the two on in the living room as well as here in the kitchen. I can control, there's a fader bar here that allows in terms of the intensity and the great thing is that I can also adjust the color to create different moods. I wanna go a little pink, a little red, down here a little blue, or maybe a little green depending upon. Pretty nifty, all right from my phone. The intensity, the color, and saving energy. Now, I better finish setting up my surprise before Megan arrives. Okay, let me shut her down. Pete, what do you need help with? Megan, I just needed someone here to help me eat this anniversary cake. Anniversary. Yes. <laughs> it's been 20 years since we've been showing people here on Powerhouse how to save energy, so I thought it would be nice to celebrate. Thank you. you That's so nice. And yeah. speaking of saving energy, you know what I did today? I became a technician's apprentice, and I helped tune up an air conditioner and clean out a dryer vent, because annual maintenance is important. 
And I helped Megan inside and outside the house to find and fix air leaks. Every little leak fixed helps you save energy. And I showed you how LED lights not only can save energy, but they can also be a lot of fun. I love these different colors, Megan. Oh, I love it. That's very cool. That neat? You know what that is? Take a look at that. It's called style. I'm working on it, Megan. Yeah. I'm working on it. So where's the music coming from? It's another LED bulb that I installed. It shines light and can play music right from your phone. Isn't technology wonderful? That is very cool. Can we eat some cake? Oh, you know, I thought you'd never ask. Happy anniversary, Megan. Happy anniversary, Pete. And while we celebrate, why don't you take a look back at some of the ways we've helped you save energy over the years on Powerhouse. Megan, this has been a great experience. Oh, it certainly has. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Today we're taking you where most people can't go, inside Whirlpool Corporation's Amana Refrigeration Factory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, baby. Lynn, thanks a lot. You've given us some great information, and I really, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Lynn, thanks for telling us about ground source heat pumps and filling us in, and uh, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> let go. <laughs> Give him the putty knife and he thinks he's in drool. <laughs> Today we're taking <clears throat> is well, oh, uh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Now after you do that, you want to cover your drywall. <laughs> Thank you very much. Stay tuned for more of Caulking with Pete when we come back. Okay, okay, let me, okay, what is it again? Photovoltaics. Whoa. <laughs> and away we go. Well, Megan, that wraps up our show. Throw your thing around. Okay. Well, and, speaking uh, of wrapping up, Pete, I think I'll do just that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Got ahead of you there, Megan. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Powerhouse Home Energy Tips. Thanks for coming, good night. <laughs>